I know that this is a complicated time. You've got a friend who is struggling with grief and you really want to support them and you don't know how. The simple fact that you're here right now watching this video means that you care and you want to support them. That means you're already a huge step in the right direction. Your care is the most important part. There is nothing that you can say or do that will make them feel any better. So step away from that right now. You're not going to make this better. But what you can do is be there with them and for them. You can support them. In fact, that's what they need. So what I'd love to do is make some suggestions for phrases you can avoid saying so you don't hurt them worse and some ideas of what to say when you're really struggling. And I also want to recognize that there are different ways that we support people in grief depending on how recent that grief is. For example, if the funeral is tomorrow, the ways that you're going to support your friends will be quite different than if it's a month down the road or maybe a year down the road. Grief changes and flexes with time and everybody's grief journey goes a different way. So I want to recognize that some of the suggestions for the immediate need might change over time. But let's start by getting you over the hump right now and support the friend who desperately needs your presence. And that's exactly the first step. Show up. Be present. Whether that's with a call or in person, if that's possible. If it's just sitting with them and letting them know that you're there. You don't actually have to have a whole lot of words. Recognizing that this is really, really difficult, that this is sad, it hurts. Just letting them talk about what they're feeling is probably one of the first most important things to do. You do need to have, take second place in this conversation. They are the most important. Putting your own worries, fears, concerns, uncomfortableness, putting all that aside and putting them first is pretty important. Now, it could be also that you're grieving too. Maybe you knew the deceased. And so you need to go into it knowing that you're going to be carrying some of your own baggage as well. And you need support. But we are always called to support people while we are struggling as well. And presence is the most important thing. Now, a little side note here for any of the religious people. And I understand this is going to sound odd coming from a minister. But you need to shelve the religion and the faith conversations just a little bit wait until a little later in the grieving process. If we're still talking about the early stages where we're at the funeral or just a day or two afterwards, talking to them about what you believe and what, what comfort you might receive through your faith, they're not ready to have that conversation yet. And I can tell you, unfortunately, from firsthand experience that when people jump too quickly into religious or faith-based conversations, they can be really hurtful, even though they had the best intentions. Don't say, well, she's in a better place. Don't mention that we should be celebrating because they're in heaven and we're stuck here on earth. Please don't talk about how God needed another angel. Don't talk about how it was their time to go or how God had some bigger plan. And another phrase that really hurts is when you mention to somebody that God would never give them more than they could handle. All of these things are based on huge suppositions that your friend who is grieving is not ready to handle yet. Just set those aside. There's always time to have that conversation later. There's lots of opportunity to talk with them about faith. And for some people, faith is a source of extreme comfort in difficult times. But right now, they're not ready for that. It might be really tempting to draw parallels. Perhaps you've had an experience that's similar. Maybe you lost a loved one as well. But let me reassure you, what you experienced is totally different than what they are going through. And so try to avoid saying something like, I know exactly what you're feeling because you don't. If you have to talk about something along those lines, maybe you can say, I had a parallel experience and I might have some tips to offer, but that's still for later in the process. That's not something you say during a visitation or a wake or a funeral. 
There are lots of people who do find comfort in knowing that other people have struggled with grief in the same way. But let me reassure you, what you felt is different from what they're going through, no matter how similar your stories. Unless you are a grief counselor, please don't tell somebody what speed they should grieve at or how quickly they should get over something or when they should expect the next stage. There are these discussions about the various different stages of grief, but not everybody will hit every stage. And sometimes damage is done when you tell somebody, oh yeah, well you're feeling this now and you'll feel that next. And if they don't wind up there, they feel like they're doing it somehow wrong. Many people who are working through grief are also racked with guilt and wishing they could have done something different, blaming themselves, even if we all know that there's nothing they could have done. So you want to avoid saying anything that might encourage them to think that way and go down that rabbit hole. That is one way that people can lead themselves into what's called complicated grief, where they get stuck there, where they struggle to process it and, they're, and they stay held in their grief. So there's a whole pile of things not to say. What should you say? You can start by saying, I'm sorry for your loss. Affirm that this is very difficult for them, that they are hurting, that they are sad, or even if they say like they don't feel like they've had a good cry yet, just affirm that what they're feeling is legitimate. It is exactly correct and they are likely to be in the midst of the most confusing and upside down time of their lives. None of this is logical, none of this can be explained rationally, and they have every right to feel whatever it is they're feeling. And if you're really stuck for words, admitting that is also okay. You can say something like, I really wish I knew what to say, but I don't. Just know that I'm here and I care. This is also a time to practice getting comfortable with silence. I have sat with many people through their darkest times just sitting in silence. Sometimes people just need to know that you're there with them, that you're holding space for them and with them, and that you are paying attention to them in this moment of grief. Sometimes people are a little bit hesitant to share a story about the deceased because they're worried that if they talk about the deceased, they're going to be bringing up old memories and making it hurt worse. But let me reassure you that the person who is grieving is thinking about the person they miss all day, every day, every waking moment they are on their mind. You're not going to be rehashing anything or bringing anything up. But what you can do by sharing a story is connect the memories that they're holding on to with something real and tangible. You, your story. And it can be a really beautiful thing to share. Leave room for tears and laughter. In fact, in all of the funerals that I've been part of, laughter, I would say, is as common or more common than tears. Telling stories that highlight some of the best memories we have of the people that we are missing is a beautiful and helpful way to process our shared grief and loss. It's a way of telling somebody that no matter if the person is gone, their memories will live on in you and in them. And those stories are beautiful things that bring back some of the most wonderful memories. Another suggestion I'd love to make is for you to send a physical card. In this day and age of it being very easy to send an email or a text message, those things are lovely as well. But there's something truly special if the person who is grieving is holding in their hand a card that came from you, a physical thing. So much in their life is in upheaval, having some physical things to attach to, to connect with, to feel grounded with is really, really important. And that's something that will be still available on the times when you're not available. They can go back to your card and reread your beautiful words. They can feel again the thing they felt when they first opened it and realized you cared for them. There's something truly special about a handwritten card received while we're grieving. Oh, one more tip, and this is my absolute favorite. When the obituary comes out, make sure that you make a note of the birth date of the deceased. Put that in your phone or your scheduler and make sure that you call your friend on the day that would have been the birthday. 
you know they're thinking about the person then. And if you call and let them know that you're thinking about them too, that will make such a huge difference. Special anniversaries and birthdays and celebrations wind up having different meanings and can be very difficult when we're grieving. And so knowing that you are being held in somebody else's care on the date of a birthday, that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Keep being the caring friend that you are. Go and support people in grief.